Hello everyone, today we will be discussing a few rookies that I believe that are going to have a lot of significance in the new NBA season. All right, the first rookie that I'm going to start off with, most people would think it would be Paolo Banchero, but you know what, I'm going to start off with what, who I believe should have been the number one pick in this year's draft, and that's Chet Holmgren. All right, Chet Holmgren, he's a, he's a forward type center, all right, he has, he's a great all-around player, ball handler, he has the athleticism of a guard, but he has a defensive, uh, you know, prowess that a, a center would have. He has, he knows how to space the floor, he knows how to pass the ball, and he's amazing at the three-point line. I believe he was 42% beyond the arc during summer league and 50% overall. All right, he was averaging, well, let me just take a look, 14 points, 8.4 rebounds, 2.8 assists, 2 steals, and 2.8 blocks per game. And like, on, like I said, on 50% shooting and 42% shooting from beyond the, the arc. Now, the reason I believe that he has the most, the, the highest chance of actually becoming one of the best rookies of the year is the fact that he literally has no competition for the spot that he's going to be taking. He will be taking that center position at 7 foot 1. All right, he's great at protecting the rim. Like I said, he's great at blocking the ball, and he's going to be playing great, I believe, with Josh Giddy. Him and Josh Giddy are going to have plenty of pick and roll plays, and I think that with him there, there's going to be a really, really big, big difference. The team is young, they're building, but I think the Thunder are going to be honestly probably top ten offens offensively this year, and probably top ten defensively as well. I also want to talk about next, but obviously about Paolo Banchero, just because he went first. I mean, I'll be honest with you, personally, after the two games that he played, everybody, was, I, would, I think he averaged 20 points, six rebounds, and five assists, something like that. But at the end of the day, everybody believed, oh, yeah, two games, and Orlando Magic administration decided, okay, we're not going to play him anymore. We don't want him to get injured. We don't need to see what's going to happen, okay? Well, we need him ready for the rest of the year, as if he's going to be their number one option. I mean, I could understand why they, he would be on their number one option, but at the end of the day, he's a rookie. And rookies all tend to, in the beginning of the season, first half of the season, all tend to have different difficulties, different things they have to work on, bad percentage, shooting percentages, and so on and so forth. Yes, I agree. He will not have any, uh, any f uh, fighting when it comes down to his position because the only other person that really played his position on that team is Jonathan Isaac. I get they could put Wendell Carter Jr. there, but they're not going to do it. They're not going to put Mo Bamba there. And the only other person that could only play in that power forward position is, is Jonathan Isaac. But we don't really know what's going on with Jonathan Isaac at the moment. We don't know if he's still injured. We honestly don't know what's going on. So I see it. I could see Paolo Banchero being the number one uh, player on that team, the number one option, but I just don't see him putting up the numbers that everybody else feels that he's going to be putting up, putting up 20 points a game, almost a triple-double. I just don't see it. On the defensive end, he's also, eh, you know, just not, not that impressive. I can't say, I can't say that he's anything, you know, that makes me, you know, go crazy about. Uh, as 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 I as I do with regards to Chet Holmgren, for example. Also, a person that you probably don't think I would ever talk about, or probably don't maybe don't know even who he is, but I'd like to talk about the number 13 pick that Charlotte Hornets took in the NBA draft this year, Jalen Durant. All right, now the Charlotte Hornets. Let's take a little sidetrack real quick. Who 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 do they have at center? Mason Plumlee. At the end of the day. You know what I mean? And now they have Mark Williams. Okay, all right, I understand. But you go ahead and you dr and you and, and, and you trade the a possibly great center when you need a center straight to Detroit right off the bat. I just want to say real quick that the Char Steve Borrego and the Charlotte administration. I mean, I don't know what they're doing over there, and honestly, I, I don't know how Mason Plumlee could makes the cut to make center over there. But that's beyond the point. I want to talk about Jalen Duran in the sense that he is. I see him doing amazing things in the NBA. I believe that out of this whole entire draft class, he's going to be the best center within the next two years, 100%. He has all the builds needed, all the skills needed to be a true center, all right? He will give you great field goal percentage. He will give you the points. He will give you rebounds. He will give you blocks, all right? But at the end of the day, the number one problem when it comes down to this is the fact that, A, 
there's plenty of centers on that team that could play at the center center uh, position. We have Bagley, we have uh, we have Olenek, we have uh, uh, Stewart, and now we have Nolan's Noel that was traded from the Knicks to to Detroit, and now obviously Jalen Durant. If it was me, I would be putting Isaiah Stewart at the four, and then putting. Jalen Duran at the five because simply because Stewart he could play at the four he could shoot beyond the arc right and at the end of the day he's more of a power forward anyway I believe that Jalen Duran is more explosive he could play the play the game he knows how to pick and roll he he's just completely dominant when it comes down to the rim in those few games that I've seen him play and I honestly have a lot of high hopes for this one player, honestly, because I'm a big fan of centers in general, just so everybody knows. And when I look at a lot of draft picks and when I draft myself, I always, always focus on centers because centers will always give you those four categories that are very important to any category league when it comes down to fantasy basketball. Now, I also want to talk about the DeJounte, DeJounte Murray trade to the Atlanta Hawks. Now, how is that going to work? Last year... I believe Trey Young finished in the top five, all right, and DeJounte Murray finished in the top 15. I think he was 11th or something like that, all right? He was averaging, oh, 21 points, nine rebounds, six assists, I believe, and about two steals, all right? Now that he's being traded, now that he's been traded to the Atlanta Hawks, do we really see the both of them still keeping up their, t Trey Young keeping up his top five value and uh, DeJounte Murray keeping up his top 11 value? I personally don't think so. When it comes down to Trey Young, I think he's still going to keep his top 10 value, maybe even top 5 value, okay, next to Durante Murray, because at the end of the day, Trey Young is a facilitator. He, you know what he's going to do. He's going to bring in those assists. He's going to bring in those points, and he's going to bring in you, your, you those couple of steals and defensive stats that you need. Yes, it was sometimes might be on bad shooting percentage, but that never matters when it comes down to Dre, Trey Young. In regards to Durante Murray, listen, it's just a simple fact. You have Trey Young next to you. There's no way that you're going to be putting up six, seven, eight, sometimes even ten assists a game. It's just not going to happen. I see his assists dropping down to literally three, three point three assists a game tops. All right. I could see his steal numbers probably staying around the same because you know the defensive end does need a lot of help on that team. Uh, when it comes down to rebounds, I do believe that his rebounds will also stay more or less the same, but. With, again, with John Collins and Capella there, what could possibly happen? I mean, yeah, maybe his nine rebounds will drop down to five or his nine rebounds will drop down to four. But point is, at the end of the day, I just don't see him keeping that top 20 value, okay? He would definitely not be averaging 21 points next to Trey Young, Capella, and John Collins either. And at the end of the day, I see him putting up 17 points, maybe five rebounds, three assists, a steal a game. Again, that would be top 30, top 40 value right there, but he's definitely not going to be a top 15 value after the fact. The next trade I want to talk about is the Gobert trade to the Minnesota Timberwolves. And this trade, I'll be honest with you, I'm very, very, very excited about. I'm excited about what this team is going to do together. I'm excited about what Cat and Gobert are going to do together. I honestly just am so excited to see this team play at full force. We got DeAngelo De, uh, Russell. We got a Anthony Edwards. We got probably either Jay Wayman or J Jaden McDaniels at the three. We're going to have Cat at the four, and we're going to have Rudy Gobert at the five. That just sounds like a completely massive, massive starting lineup. All right? We have absolutely everything in that team. And me, personally, I never believed that uh, Cat's, you know, position should have been the five. He should have been always at the four, all right, and then we should have had a true center. Oh, the Minnesota Timberwolves should always, always had a true center at the five, okay? At the end of the day, Rudy Gobert, of course, he's going to get those rebounds. He's, he was averaging over 15 points, 14 rebounds, and 1.8 blocks a game last season. Now, how is that going to transpire into the Minnesota Timberwolves team, and how is that going to affect Cat? Well, I'm going to tell you real quick. Cat, honestly, I don't see him keeping his top 10 value. I really, really don't next to Rudy Gobert because you got to understand, Rudy Gobert is a dominant force. That guy is unbelievably strong. He will keep the paint defended at all times, and every single player knows it, all right? When it comes down to him, he's going to take away all, all of Cat's uh, rebounds. 
He's going to take away his re, uh, his blocks, that 1.1 blocks that he that he did get, all right? And after I'm I'm not arguing that Cat is still going to be an amazing shooter and he's going to be an amazing player. I believe that overall as a team for the Timberwolves, it's a better fit. But for fantasy perspective, when it comes down to Cat being a top 10 player, I don't believe that's going to possibly happen. I do believe that he does have the potential at 15, top 15, maybe top 20, just because of the simple fact that he shoots threes, he's going to be a monster, and he's not going to have to do all everything at once. And when he was playing before as a center, he pretty much had to do everything. There was no one next to him. He had to always do, like, you know, he was averaging 10 to 10 rebounds. He was averaging 1.1 blocks, and that just didn't cut it, all right? Yes, he had 27 points per game, but you know what? That obviously didn't cut it. All right, now with Rudy Gobert there, I think Minnesota is honestly, like I said, is going to be a top of a t 10 offensive prowess and a top 10 defensive prowess. With Ann Ed Edwards, with his stealing skills, with Rudy Gobert and the fact that he's a blocking machine, the defensive end is not going to have a problem this year. Yes, D'Angelo Ross Russell, not an amazing defender. Okay, Cat, not an amazing defender, especially now Rudy is there. But I see them winning probably... 45 to 50 games this year, and I do believe they are going to make the playoffs. The next topic I want to talk about is the possible trades that, that still could happen during the year, before the season happens, before the trade deadline happens. What's going to happen with Durant and uh, Kyrie Irving? Honestly, what's going on with the Brooklyn organization in general? Everybody's blaming Durant for some apparent reason. Everybody's blaming Kyrie Irving for some apparent reason. But why are we blaming them? Why aren't we blaming the administration? Why aren't we being, b blaming the administration that took Steve Nash as a coach? I mean, let me explain something to you. If Steve Kerr could get Steph Curry open for a, a three-pointer once or twice a game, let's say just, you know, for giving numbers out, once or twice a game, and he's open for a three-point shot, how is it ke that Kevin Durant is never open? At the end of the day, yeah, you could say that Kevin Durant is not because he's lazy or he's not a great defender, he doesn't want to move around. But that's all, in my personal opinion, I think that's all BS because Steve Nash, the coach, is supposed to be the facilitator of the game. He should know his players. He should run the plays and make it that so Kyrie Irving and people and players like Durant, who is considered one of the best shooters in the game, okay, to have an open shot once a game, for God's sake. You know what I mean? It's as simple as that. And somehow, Steve Nash is the only one that has a secure job, which doesn't make any sense. And everybody wonders why Durant wants to trade. Well, personally, I don't blame him, all right? Durant is on a team right now where they're supposed to be amazing, but they're falling behind just because of what's going on within the organization. What does that have to do with the players? We also have the chance that Indiana completely rebuilds their team. Are they going to trade Miles Turner? In my personal opinion, I think that Miles Turn, a Miles Turn trade for them would be a smart idea. If they already got rid of Brogdon, right, and they give, trade Brogdon to the Celtics, they give them freeing up cap space. They're trying to rebuild their team, right? They picked up Hal Burton, uh, Hal Burton so he's going to be running the offense. He's going to be num the number one option anyway, all right? So why not trade Miles Turner, really? You're not really expecting to make the playoffs, obviously, if you trade it off one of your best players, and at the end of the day, you traded off the Bonta Sabonis last year, so it looks like it's a rebuilded team. Why not trade Miles Turner? We don't know if it's going to happen. We don't know if it's going to happen before the season. We don't know if it's going to happen before the deadline, but in my personal opinion, I think before the deadline this year, he will certainly be traded. Lastly, I want to talk about this whole entire controversy and you know rumors that are going around Donovan Mitchell, right? And now, personally, I'm a Knicks fan. I'll tell everybody how it is, all right? I've been a Knicks fan since I was pretty much five years old, and I always loved the Knicks. And the rumors about Don Mitchell coming to the Knicks, that would just be wonderful. But in my opinion, why are we going after Don Mitchell? Yes, I agree. We just picked up Jalen Brunson, and Jalen Brunson is no Donovan Mitchell. But what are we going to do? We're going to put Jalen Brunson at the one, then Don Mitch at the two, and then we're going to, what are we going to do with Quentin Grimes? What are we going to do? We're going to put R.J. Barrett at the three, Julius Randle at the four, and then at the five, we're, what? we're going to end up with Jericho Sims or something like that, and Mitchell Robinson. Mitchell Robinson, who, by the way, gets injured all the time, and it will end up being Jericho Sims. 
You know what I mean? I mean, I like the team a lot, and Quentin Grimes, with what he's shown during this summer league, he was honestly amazing. I honestly have a lot, a, a lot of enthusiasm about him as well. But what are we going to do with Donovan Mitchell? What was the point of getting Jalen Brunson? There's a lot of questions behind all, all of that. And at the end, at, at the end of uh, this episode, I just want to explain and want to tell you guys what, what my, my top five picks for, for this upcoming NBA draft is going to be. It's either going to be for the first pick, I'm either going to go with Giannis or, or, or Steph. Same thing going with the second pick if it's not Steph. Second pick is going to be uh, is going to be Steph. If it's not Giannis, it is going to be Giannis. For third, I got Jokic. Fourth, Luca. Fifth, Embiid. Joe. Thanks for listening, every, everyone. This episode is brought to you by Notorious Radio 718. My name is Mike, and this is Everyone Wants to Be Like Mike. Everyone, please subscribe to our YouTube uh, account, and please subscribe and follow all our social media accounts. We really appreciate it, and we love you all. Stay tuned to our next video. Thank you, and have a good day.